हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू क्लास आर टूडेज टारगेट फॉर लाइक्स आर फिफ्टी इफ यू वांट यू कैन डू इट सो प्लीज बी क्वाइट टिल दैट टाइम आई एम ट्राइंग माय बेस्ट टू स्टार्ट आई एम ट्राइंग माय बेस्ट टू स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो आई एम एबल टू डू इट इन माय लेक्चर सो आई एम ट्राइंग इट आई एम गोइंग आउटसाइड in the network place i'll come from there and then i will continue it with you no problem class science tutorials atoms and molecules atoms and molecules class 9 tutorial let me start my tutorial again now i have started it kindly see it carefully atoms and molecules this is an ant hill the ants are busy building it it takes many small grains of sand to make an ant hill if you take a closer look at the grain of sand under a scanning tunneling microscope you can see that even the small grain of sand consists of millions of particles which are minuscule in nature these particles are called atoms atoms are the building blocks of all material atoms are made up of three types of particles called protons neutrons and electrons an atom has a central nucleus with protons and neutrons in it protons are positively charged and neutrons have no charge so the nucleus is positively charged protons and neutrons are collectively called nucleons electrons are negatively charged and are located around the nucleus an atom has the same number of negatively charged electrons as it has positively charged protons in the nucleus therefore atoms are electrically neutral electrons are distributed in a definite path around the nucleus and are called shells or orbits this concept was introduced by niels bohr according to bohr different electrons revolve around the nucleus in their own different orbits the atom has been compared to the solar system in an atom the nucleus is the sun and the electrons are the planets just like planets in the solar system each electron revolves around the nucleus in its own different orbit The orbits of shells are represented by the letters K, L, M, etc. The maximum number of electrons present in a shell is given by the formula 2n square where n is the orbit number of energy cells. The first orbit or K shell can have 2, the second orbit or L shell can have 8 and M shell can have 18 electrons etc. The electrons present in the outermost shell of an atom are called valence electrons and the shell which valence electrons occupy is called the valence shell. A molecule is in general a group of two or more atoms that is chemically bonded together. Atoms combine chemically by external forces such as heat and light. This leads to the formation of molecules. During the formation of a molecule, atoms lose their valence electrons or gain electrons from other atoms. For instance, if two pieces of wax are to be joined, they are heated. After heating, the two pieces are pressed together to form a single structure. Here, heat is the chemical factor which is responsible for joining the molecules of wax pieces. There are two main types of bonds, covalent and ionic. If a molecule is made up of atoms of the same element, it is called a homoatomic molecule. If the molecule is made up of atoms of different elements, it is called a heteroatomic molecule. Things to remember. Building blocks of matter that we see in the universe are atoms. Protons, neutrons and electrons constitute an atom. Protons have a positive charge and neutrons have no charge and electrons are negatively charged. The maximum number of electrons present in a shell is given by the formula 2n square. A molecule is a chemical bonding of two or more atoms. Bonds are classified as covalent and ionic. There are two types of molecules, homoatomic and heteroatomic.
Morse model of atom. Various models of the atom have been proposed by eminent scientists over the years. These models have increased our understanding of the atomic structure. Among these models, Rutherford suggested that electrons revolve around the nucleus in well-defined orbits. But there was a problem with this. The motion of electrons in Rutherford's model was unstable because any charged particle moving in a circular path emits electromagnetic radiation. Thus the electrons would lose energy and fall into the nucleus making the atom highly unstable. Then, which would be a better model of an atom? To overcome the objections against Rutherford's model of atom, Niels Bohr in 1913 proposed a new atom model. What does this model propose? It first proposes that electrons revolve around the nucleus in specific orbits and these orbits are associated with definite energies and are called shells or energy levels. These orbits or shells are represented by the letters K, L, M, N. The maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a particular orbit is 2n to the power of 2 where n is the number of the orbit. Thus K shell would have 2 electrons. Electrons. L shell would have 8 electrons, M shell would have 18 electrons and N shell would have 32 electrons and so on. That said, what does this model next propose? It next proposes that the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost level is 8. And finally it says that the orbit closest to the nucleus has minimum energy and the orbit farthest has a maximum energy. Well then, does an electron radiate energy by itself? Since electrons move in a particular orbit, they do not radiate energy by themselves. Instead, is when an atom absorbs energy, The electron can radiate energy and return to its original state or drop down to the next energy level. Bohr's model works well for simple atoms and is easy to understand. It is one among the atomic structures still in use today and the other being the quantum mechanical model. Na, 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 Pardon me, I'm not Earphone like Atoms are the basis of chemistry and of everything in the universe. Atoms are the general term used to describe pieces of matter. That is, matter is composed of atoms. That brings us to the question, what is an atom? An atom is a basic unit of matter that consists of a dense central nucleus surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. Studies of atoms dates back to as far as the Socrates, a Greek philosopher, described atom as that which cannot be cut up further. <laughs> Artificial 
Acharya Kannada of India defined atom as eternal and indestructible and which cannot exist in free state. Acharya Kannada proposed that atom was indivisible and indestructible, but this can only be said so if it is not composed of Democritus's and Canada's theories that atom is indestructible. Who were the people behind the discoveries of these particles? They were none other than James Chadwick who discovered neutron, Eugene Goldstein who discovered proton, and J.J. Thompson who discovered the electron. So how do we explain the arrangement of protons and electrons inside an atom? To explain the arrangement of protons and electrons inside the atom, J.J. Thomson prepared a model for the structure of the atom, known as Thomson's model of atom. The model of an atom proposed by Thomson is similar to a Christmas pudding. In this model, electrons are arranged in a sphere of positive charge like plum in the spherical Christmas pudding, so it is called plum pudding model of an atom. Do you know of any fruit that we can compare Thomson's atom model to? Well, it can be compared to a watermelon. The negative charged electrons are like seeds embedded all over the positively charged sphere that is compared to the edible part of the watermelon. Thus, Thomson proposed that an atom consists of positively charged sphere and the electrons are embedded in it. The negative and positive charges are equal in magnitude, so atom as a whole is electrically neutral. Things to remember Atoms are the basis of chemistry and of everything in the universe. Democritus described atom as that which cannot be cut up further. James Chadwick discovered neutron. Eugene Goldstein discovered proton and J.J. Thomson discovered electron. The model of an atom proposed by Thomson is similar to a Christmas pudding. In this model, electrons are arranged in a sphere of positive charge like plum in a spherical Christmas pudding. The negative and positive charges are equal in magnitude, so atom as a whole is electrically neutral. Elements and compounds. Matter present in our surroundings can be classified as, as a pure, pure substance and mixtures. Pure substances classified in compounds. Elements. An element is a pure chemical substance consisting of only one type of atom. Different elements are arranged in the field. Of as metals and non-metals metals. exist as atoms or molecules. There are some elements which behave like metals and non-metals which are called metalloids. Boron, germanium. Compounds. A compound is a pure chemical substance composed of two or more chemical elements such as sugar and baking soda. In a compound, the component elements are present in a fixed ratio. The properties of a compound are different from that of its component elements. The elements react chemically and form chemical bonds between them. Based on the nature of the bonds, compounds can be classified into ionic, molecular, or covalent compounds. Ionic compounds. Ionic compounds contain ions that are held together by the force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. Sodium chloride or carbon salt is a good example of an ionic compound. Sodium atom has one electron in its valence shell and chlorine atom has seven electrons in its valence shell. When these atoms collide with each other, the sodium atom loses its valence electron and becomes a positively charged sodium ion and attains a stable octet configuration. The electron released from the sodium atom is gained by the chlorine atom and completes its octet. 
Now chlorine becomes a negatively charged chloride ion. The electrostatic force of attraction between these oppositely charged ions result in the formation of sodium chloride molecule. Now, let's try to understand covalent or molecular bonds. Covalent compounds contain discrete molecules held together by sharing electrons. The simplest example is the water molecule. The water molecule is formed by combining two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen atom. Hydrogen has one valence electron and oxygen has six valence electrons. The hydrogen atom with one valence electron needs an additional electron to complete its first energy level and oxygen atom with six valence electrons needs two additional electrons to complete its second energy level. As one hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom collide, a covalent bond is formed by the sharing of electrons between atoms. By sharing an electron pair with the oxygen atom, the hydrogen atom completes its first shell and attains a stable noble gas configuration. Oxygen atom now has seven electrons in its valence shell. By accomplishing its stable octet configuration, oxygen atom shares an electron with another hydrogen atom and forms a water molecule. Things to remember. Mm. Elements are the simplest form of matter and are made up of atoms of the same kind. In the periodic table, elements are arranged in the order of increasing atomic number. Elements can be classified into metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Compounds are pure substances composed of two or more different elements. The properties of a compound are different from that of its component elements. Ionic compounds are formed by the electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions and covalent compounds are formed by the sharing of electrons between atoms. Laws of constant proportion Now here are some laws. Laws of chemical combinations. In an era of scientific advancement, scientists found themselves amidst questions pertaining to fundamental principles of chemical combinations. Chemical combinations were studied and these laws were theorized as the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass was established by French chemist Antoine Laurent Le Bossier in 1789. According to this law, the mass of the substance produced in a chemical reaction is always equal to the mass of the reacting substances. Therefore, the law of conservation of mass states that mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Let us now consider the example in which magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Here, mass of 1 mole magnesium is 24 grams. Total mass of 2 moles magnesium is 48 grams. Mass of 1 mole oxygen molecule is 32 grams. So the total mass of reactants is 48 plus 32 which is 80 grams. Mass of 1 mole magnesium oxide is 40 grams. Total mass of products is 40 and 40 which is 80 grams. Therefore, it is clear that the total mass of reactants is equal to the total mass of products. Also, the number of magnesium atoms and the number of oxygen atoms on the reactants and the product sides are equal. Let's move on to the second law of chemical combination, which is the law of constant proportion. This law was stated by a French chemist, Joseph Louis Proust. It is also called the law of definite proportion. According to the law, in a chemical compound, the elements are always present in definite proportion by mass. The law of definite proportion applies when elements react together to form the same product such as pure water collected from different sources such as a well, spring or a river. As such, a water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms, each of relative mass 1 gram and one oxygen atom of relative mass of 16 grams. This means that there are 2 grams of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen in 18 grams of water. So in a water molecule, hydrogen and oxygen are present in the ratio of 1 is to 8. 
The example shows the application of law of definite proportion. We will now learn about the law of multiple proportions. This law was proposed by John Dalton around 1800. This law states that when two elements combine to form more than one compound, the different masses of one element that combine with the same mass of another element are in the ratio of simple whole numbers. Let's try to understand through an example. Carbon combines with high concentration of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and low concentration of oxygen to form carbon monoxide. In carbon monoxide, 12 parts of mass of carbon combines with 16 parts of mass of oxygen. In carbon dioxide, 12 parts by mass of carbon combines with 32 parts by mass of oxygen. The ratio of the masses of oxygen that combine with a fixed mass of carbon is 16 is to 32 or 1 is to 2. Therefore, we can see that different masses of one element that combine with the same mass of another element are in the ratio of simple whole numbers. Things to remember. Law of chemical combinations are Law of conservation of mass Law of constant proportion and Law of multiple proportion. The mass of the substance produced in a chemical reaction is always equal to the mass of reacting substances. In a chemical compound, the elements are always present in definite proportion by mass. The different masses of one element that combine with the same mass of another element are in the ratio of simple whole numbers. <laughs> Now here is laws of conservation of mass. Now here is laws of conservation of mass in detail. The law of conservation of mass. We require measuring cylinders, vacuum chloride solution, sodium sulfate solution, conical flask, cork. 10 ml test tube and an electronic balance. Measure 5 ml of sodium sulfate solution in a measuring cylinder. Pour it into a conical flask. Measure 5 ml of vacuum chloride solution in another measuring cylinder. Pour it into a 10 ml test tube. Tie the test tube using a thread and hang the test tube in a conical flask carefully so that the solutions do not mix with each other. Cork the conical flask so that the thread holding the test tube is firmly held in place. Take the conical flask and carefully weigh the flask in an electronic balance with all the contents ensuring that the solutions do not mix and note the reading. Take the flask from the balance, tilt it and swirl the flask so that vacuum chloride solution in the test tube spills and mixes with sodium sulfate solution in the flask and forms a white colored precipitate of barium sulfate BASO4 and an aqueous solution of sodium chloride BAS.
law of conservation of ma- mass in proper way in more details the law of conservation of mass yeah. law of conservation of mass the chemical substances react to form new products the french chemist antoine laurent lavoisier proved that in all chemical reactions the mass of the substances produced after a chemical reaction is equal to the mass of the reacting substances destroyed in a chemical reaction the law also tells us that the number of atoms after a chemical reaction will always be the same as the number of the reaction our aim here is to verify the law of conservation of mass during a chemical reaction materials with sodium sulfate solution measuring cylinders 10 ml test tube red 250 ml glass cork and an electronic balance procedure take the beaker containing sodium sulfate solution pour 5 ml of sodium sulfate solution into the measuring cylinder transfer it into a 250 ml conical glass now take the beaker containing barium chloride solution Pour 5 ml of barium chloride solution into a measuring jar. Transfer it into Mama, a test Daddy, tube. Mama, Daddy, Mama. Take a thread. Tie the test tube using the thread. Tie the test tube in the conical flask carefully so that the solutions do not mix with each other. Take the cork from the mouth of the flask so that the thread within the test tube is held firmly in place. Take the conical flask. from an electronic balance with all the contents ensuring that the solutions do not mix and match the reading take the flask from the balance tilt it and swirl the flask so that the barium chloride solution in the test tube spills and mixes with sodium sulfate solution in the flask and forms a white colored precipitate of barium sulfate BASO4 and a solution of sodium chloride NaCl. Wait for 10 minutes to complete the reaction. Take the flask and weigh the contents of the flask again and note down the reading. It will be observed that the total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products. Hence, the law of conservation of mass is verified. precautions when setting up the apparatus and while taking the first reading of the total mass of the apparatus and reactants care must be taken that the barium chloride solution in the test tube and mix with the sodium sulfate solution in the conical glass reaction tilt and swirl the glass well so that the barium chloride solution in the test tube spills and mixes with sodium sulfate Onion check cells Onion check cells mate we all apps Onion and cheek cells The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all known living organisms Sorry Some organisms so, uh, Sorry are all, all are done Sorry and all are done This was second first chapter by mistake it was done